Hi, this is Mary Rankin and you're watching PhilippineNews.com. You know, it was, um, you know, we knew going on, going into the fight that it was going to be a tactical um, chess match that both guys are boxers by nature and they're, they're fast counter punches with power so they're, they're both kind of leery of each other, not, they don't want to take too many chances, but it was actually more strategic and more of a chess match than I expected in the first five rounds. Um, uh, and I thought that Donaire had an edge in each of those rounds because he was willing to let his hands go more. He was willing to take more chances than, than Nishioka, but he really wasn't uh, landing a lot. Nishioka was blocking a lot of those shots or stepping back. and So, it, you know, it, there wasn't a lot to be excited about. It was pretty boring for five rounds. Um, and then um, Donaire finally connected and, and caught Nishioka. And once Nishioka got hurt and got dropped and got up, the fighter came out and he started to, to, to press Donaire a little bit more, um, which I think Donaire is, is more comfortable with. Boxers don't like boxers, so he's comfortable being on his toes and kind of counter punching from the outside. And once Nishioka sort of fell into that pattern of, of trying to press him, you kind of knew that um, Donaire was going to take over. And he connected in, in the ninth round and closed the show. Um, I thought from the sixth round to the ninth round, Donaire looked like a pound for pound level fighter because um, he was basically in control and hurting um, um, a top a top fighter, a really respected veteran and, and the guy that, that Ring Magazine said was the best junior featherweight in the world. So, it, you know, boring fight for the first half of the fight, pretty decent for the second half until the end of the fight. Um, Donaire gets a plus for, um, for closing the show against a, a terrific Japanese veteran.